video. Hello and welcome to Pugacorn Part Two. Um featuring Travis J. Hansen. Um or Travis Hansen, this is his page here. Um his DeviantArt. So you guys can check that out at um Travis J. Hansen um dot deviantart dot com. Um so tell me a bit about yourself. Um, well, uh, my name is Travis, and I've been illustrating comics and games and children's books for the last 20-plus uh, years. 20 years, eh? I've been, <laughs> yeah, 20 years. It's a uh, long... I've been... <laughs> yeah. It is definitely a long time, mm. and uh, I have no plans of stopping. Nice, yeah, yeah. So, when when did you start, then? Um, at what age? Well, I've been drawing ever since I was a kid. Yeah. But I started to do this professionally when I was about 26. Hmm. So I'm now in my 40s. Yeah. Well, that's good. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it just... You start out and, and, and you think you're good, and then you realize, oh, my goodness, there's so much to learn. And then you, you realize that... Uh, as you move on, that you're always learning. There's always something new to learn and, mm -hmm. and uh, new stories to tell and such. And and uh, the adventure's been been pretty wild. I've, I've really thoroughly enjoyed where it's taken me. And uh, just recently, I've been able to get back into a lot of the gaming art that I used to do. And that has been just so much fun. Yeah, yeah. I find it interesting trying something new. Um, like lately, I got given just a little art test to do some guns and things. Mm -hmm. I found that I found that a challenge, you know, um, trying something new. Because most of my time has been drawing animals and creatures and things, as you can tell. Right. At the moment. Yeah. Um, so you've been doing it for a long, long time, even even longer than me, I'd say. <laughs> yeah, I've been. It's been a while, and, and where am I at? Where I want to be? No, I still have a lot that I want to do. Mm. You know, I I still feel that I'm very inexperienced and young in the game, mm. and I think that's important. Yeah, there's always something new to learn, and. Yeah, I find it that way at the moment. I'm like, oh my god, there's so much um, to learn, and I find it daunting sometimes. Um, but then I look back at what I could do last year, and then I'm like, okay, I've improved since last year. So, well, that's the key is is just keeping keeping at it, mm. and keep seeing that you are improving. And, and keep seeing that you can continue to improve. I think the minute the artist feels that they don't need to learn anything else, they become very stagnant as a creator. Mm. They and, yeah. Well, they lose their ability to to be relevant. You know, they're just working off comfortability, and and I have a problem with that. I want to. I don't ever want to be comfortable. I kind of want to push myself, so I'm trying new things and, and such. You know, even things that I don't like drawing. I can't personally stand drawing cars. I hate drawing cars. <laughs> yeah. um, they just drive me nuts. But one of the one of the the wonderful jobs I've had this last year was all about cars. Mm. Awesome. So it it forced me to to step out of my comfort zone. And start figuring out how to draw cars, and and am I where I want to be? No, but I'm getting closer. Hmm. Yeah, that's it's always the way. If you get closer to where you want to be, that you're going somewhere. Oh, very much so. Um, so you have many ideas. Um, where do all your ideas come from? Uh, a lot of my ideas, well. <sighs> They, they come from life itself. You know, it, it just depends on sometimes the project that I'm working on. So Life of the Party, which is my daily comic, that comes from, from the world of gaming and 
and playing, you know, games when I was a kid. I was a big RPG fan when I was a kid. And also looking at some of the, the things that I find that are kind of ironic with life, you know, things that kind of drive me nuts or uh, I smile about. And, and then you think, well, how can I put that into a situation that's either fantastic or funny or different or unique? And by doing so, you know, we were able, or I was able to come up with a very fun comic series. And uh, it's just, it, it's a little different, and and it's evolving, and but it's something that I don't really see that's out there where that really just enjoys the game itself, mm. and uh, that was kind of one of the things that I wanted to do, was to to create a comic. Now I do a full comic series that was nominated for an Eisner as well uh, in 2011, yeah, and it's a, a serial web comic called The Bean. Mm. And I started that in '09, and that has gone really big as well. Where it's just a, it's about a kid that works in an inn with a bunch of ogres, and they send him out for mushrooms one day, mm. and he gets kidnapped, finds a broken sword that he's got to fix. So it's literally the epic fantasy tale of a dishwasher. <laughs> yep, yep. But you know, it, it's where I started, and that series has had inspiration from from many different things and then just my pieces so I, I love looking at life I think there's so much out there and I think anybody can draw something that's negative that's easy you know I can draw dark and blood and guts and gore mm. but I really don't get any satisfaction from it mm. I like yeah. to look at life and go hey that bench looks pretty ordinary. What would happen if I put that bench on a floating rock in the middle of nowhere and a big rock whale is flo floating by? So it's finding something that's very ordinary and then taking it to be extraordinary. Yes. Yeah. You've got to have something that um, people can connect to or have some sort of interest to them. Yeah, there's there's a little bit of that. I get that all the time. Uh, someone will go, "You make me feel like I'm ten again," mm. and and I like that because uh, you know when you were ten, you could do anything, you could create anything, you could go anywhere. Your imagination was limit li limitlessness, um, and there was so much you could do with it. And then you hit about twelve, and the first thing everybody tells you is, "Nope, you got to conform." You have to follow all the rules. You can't do this. And, you know, once we take away that creativity, I think we lose uh, a great opportunity to, as a as human species to keep uh, pushing the boundaries and stepping out of the box and, and coming up with new ways to, to build and create things. Yeah. Sorry, there's a phone ringing in the background. Don't worry, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> okay. It's all good. <laughs> does it um? Do you have a bit of humor in your work? And does it yeah. come naturally to you? Um, the humor comes naturally. Hmm. It, it's well, yes and no. I think part of it is, is, you know, I have a bizarre sense of humor, so I kind of have to be careful, and. Uh, that little morbid sense of, of curiosity. I like to laugh at things and then, uh, and such. But the fear was when I started the daily comic strip was would I be able to maintain it? Would the ideas continue to, to show up? And would the jokes keep coming? And, and there's that realization that, that not every joke that you share will be funny to, to other people. You might think it's funny, but the masses could go, uh, I just don't get it, and and you're like, hey, I gotta redo it. And then there's other ones that sometimes I'll post a joke that I don't think is funny, but I just needed to to fill the space. And then that's the joke that everybody can relate to. <laughs> yeah. So I stopped trying to tell the jokes that I thought people would want to hear. And I just tell the jokes that kind of make me chuckle and laugh and, and such, and I don't really worry about it as much anymore. And if, if some hit and some miss, that's fine. Uh, it, it's nice having a little bit more hits than misses. Um, so that, that's definitely encouraging. But I'll tell you, it, it, 
it can be uh, it could be a little nerve wracking, uh, especially when you commit to do a daily comic every single day. Yeah, yeah, it it must be really challenging, like um, doing it every day. Is that your goal, like doing it every day, or is that I don't know something? It started out as a. Um, it started out as just a, a, a comic, and I, I didn't think about it going every day. And then it got six thousand shares. Yeah, awesome. And and we're not talking likes; we're talking actual shares, and that really threw me off. <laughs> and then I thought, well, let's let's do another one. And then all of a sudden, it evolved into a daily comic strip. And I'm a huge fan of the old Calvin and Hobbes and Bloom County, and I love the Sunday Funnies, which are really no longer there. They're not prevalent anymore. And I wanted to create something that had that same kind of feel where the art was strong and the humor subtle and, and, and unique. And the next thing I know, I'm doing a daily strip. But the, the issue with the daily that most people don't realize is you need to plan ahead. If you if you work uh, a day ahead, that can get daunting because you always you know the pressure grows even more. But I like to work on six to eight strips at a time. Okay. Yeah. So that way it's not overwhelming, and then I queue them up, mm. and I just upload them as I I see fit. Yeah, that sounds cool. Yeah, I always have many projects on the go. Um... So I can't, I can't sit there and just do one drawing or painting a day. Um, sometimes I can, but other times I need to do something else, like a bit of um, learning work, study or something, or, um, yeah, just another piece of creation. Uh, I'm the same way. Like, during the day, I'll work on five or six different jobs at a time. Mm. And that allows me to keep your mind fresh. Because it, remember, it just goes back to being stale. If you're always working on the same thing over and over again, I think you stale out pretty quickly. So you work on different kind of jobs and things? Um, well, I... Yeah. Yeah. Do you always have to have your own st the, that style they're looking for? Well, you get to a point that they're buying your style. Mm. And and I get to, with clients, if someone says, well, can you draw me a Disney character, Disney style? And I'll be very honest, I, I encourage them to go find a Disney artist. Because I don't really draw that. Uh, I draw, you know, I've developed, I've spent many years developing the style that I have. And... Now that's kind of what people want is they want that style that that people that hire me to to do games or to 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 draw a commission they're looking for what I see not what someone else draws uh, the worst is when someone will come up to you and go can you draw like so and so and I'll always ask well why don't you have so and so hire you you know why don't you hire so and so and they'll say well they're too expensive yeah and and. I look at it going, well, you know what? I'm about to get expensive because I don't want to draw like so-and-so. I don't want to be a knockoff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, um, yeah, have you ever had to adapt to a style? Oh, yeah, all the time. Hmm. And, uh, the, the, sometimes when you're, when you're working with an art director on certain projects and you come in to finish a job, you have to match what the original artist created. Mm. as best that you can, you know, depending on, on what it is. So if I was drawing for a, a comic book company, and uh, let's say it was a well-known, um, you know, for instance, it, it, I'm not saying that I'm drawing for Little Pony, which I am not, <laughs> or I, yep. I'm drawing for Face and Fur. I'm not making any claims that I draw for either one of them. But if I was to draw their comic characters, I would have to match their style. Yeah, definitely. You know, and and that is that's fine, you know. That's that's completely okay. But I I kind of want to just draw my style. I like what I've developed, um, and that's what I'm comfortable with. Definitely. Um, 
So have you been featured anywhere offline? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, like I had galleries or um, oh, galleries? printed somewhere or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have several books that are printed. Mm. Um, I've worked for several little publishers mm. over the years. Um, I've, had, I've done several games. So I, I've got material that is out there in the print industry. Um, for many years I was an art director, so I, I spent the time learning uh, how to print and how the craft works. So when I, was, um, when I ended up going on my own, it was really easy for me to, to print and create my own projects um, and not have to worry about dealing with a publisher. I'm a big proponent of self-publishing. Yeah. And and figuring out how to make things work. And I think that, you know, if either way, if I go through a publisher, I still have to put the same amount of work in for advertising and, and getting people to recognize me than I would if I self-published. Yeah. And the difference is, is with a big publisher, usually you only get like 7%, mm. between 7 and, and 10% back. And mm. when you do self-publishing, you get a little bit more because yeah. you're the one that's paying all the costs. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, I, I have a couple of books that are through a couple of publishers, and I like that aspect of it. But um, I still love the self-publishing. I still like being in charge. I like designing the book exactly how I want it, not how um, I'm told. You know how someone else might want it. Mm. Do you, Do you feel those um, that self-publishing can be risky? Oh, any kind of publishing is risky. Nothing's mm. guaranteed. Yeah. You know, no matter what you do. Um, there will be no guarantee that anything will be successful. Uh, the thing that you have to ask yourself, honestly, is how bad do you want it and what are you willing to do to make it happen? Uh, I don't just work on my, at my desk all day and, I, and, and talk to uh, people online. I do about 15 comic book conventions a year. Yep. Uh, and, and I'm constantly looking for new opportunities to get my name out there mm. and to create work that people are going to want to be in their house. If you notice, uh, if you've been through my work, I don't draw any uh, IP stuff. Yeah. You'll find no artwork that, that's licensed to somebody else. It's all my own creation. And th is that a longer path? Yes, but the advantage of it is you are able to be in more control and... I've noticed that if someone buys like Superman's head, you know, that someone else drew, they don't really own the property, those pieces usually get put away in a banner or such. Mm -hmm. But I have big prints that the whole goal was the print was to be put on a wall. Yeah. And so if I can get people to to showcase my art and really enjoy it, then I think I'm succeeding. And is it easy or hard? No, this is the hardest profession I've ever been in. Yeah. But you can survive, and and most people don't realize it. But you've got to work. You've really got to to get in there and plan. And um, you know, I'm a very I'm a deeply uh, religious individual, so I put my faith that uh, you know I'm taken care of and and such. And I believe that there's intervention in there that kind of helps. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a great support group at home with my family. Yep. that helps me stay focused. So there's a lot of great things that are there. It's just, it's also, there's times, there's no work. And so you've got to be creative, and that's when you have to go, well, what can I do to to drum up business and such? And a great artist once told me, he says, you post something every single day, yeah. whether it's a big drawing, a little drawing, or what, but you always post. And the minute you stop posting, people stop remembering that you were there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think So that's Well, go ahead. Yeah. Do you think um it's always important to post every day or um just on a regular basis like twice or three times a week? I think every day. Yeah. And and the reason why um you're creating a habit. 
You know, people will say, well, I want to do a comic strip, but they're not willing to put the time in to do a daily strip. Or, you know, they're not sketching every day. So I don't think they're taking it fully seriously. Yeah. If, if you were taking it seriously, you would put your sketches up. You know, I'm not talking about a final piece. I'm just talking about a simple sketch sometimes. Give people a reason to see what's in your mind and, and see what you're creating, and they will, they will get excited about that. So um, where does your inspiration come from? Uh, my children and my wife <laughs> and sometimes long drives. I like yeah. driving and I'll look yeah. at rocks and I'll go, oh, wow, there's a face in there. Uh, you know, music inspires me, especially soundtracks. Um, I love fantasy. I like I like to game, so then I get that that idea of, of people's imaginations of, of what they you know what the adventure is and, and collaborating. Hmm. Um, there's so much that inspires me, but it's mainly what's around me. It's looking at life itself and going, "Wow, that's pretty awesome." Definitely, yeah. We got to look at life around me. There's even in this image here. Um, I just got a rainbow cake for my birthday. And so I I came up with this idea, you know, like um, what happens if? Because my cats, I've got my mum's got my cats at the moment. Um, huh? They, my mum's got cats at the moment, and they tend to steal a lot of food. Um, so if you leave something on the bench, um, it disappears, and the the cats have eaten it. So that that's where this kind of idea came from. Was like, oh, what if a dog? was loose in my kitchen will probably go and eat the um yeah go eat the cake that I just had <laughs> right and then if you even look at it and you can go well shoot you've got three or four ideas just about you I mean you can create a story about cats mm. and they're like spies and their yeah. their goal is to steal yeah. all the food and and <laughs> and such like that there's so much that you can pull out of it and it's just you know are you willing to take that chance and just give it a shot mm. yeah definitely it's all around us. Yeah, you got to experience life and just take that into your work. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think the other thing is also in, in making it, it's, it's also knowing when to be quiet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You know, like on the Internet and such. You know, you post every day, and you can have your viewpoints and stuff, but if you learn who you, your audience is, you don't want to really alienate them. You know, and I found that my audience walks every spectrum of life. Yeah. And so I, I make sure that I'm I'm aware of that, that I'm catering to them. It doesn't mean that I, I go against what my beliefs are and my standards and I still hold my viewpoints. But at the same time I'm very considerate of what other people think and value and appreciate. And I and I think that's important. A lot of artists, you know, the first thing they say is they go, Well, you know what? I'm me and I want to be edgy and I want to 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 make a stand, and in reality, they're actually alienating a huge base that could that might actually support them. So they don't realize the damage that they're doing mm -hmm. uh, in in their career, and then they also don't realize why they have a hard time getting work. Mm. Yeah, you know. And so my goal is is everybody's important, and and you know we work that way and help them feel that way, and and at the same time. It just allows me to, to really stay true to my vision of creating pieces that just inspire people to use their imagination. Mm. Definitely. Um, you kind of need a, something for them. You know, you, you're trying to please them, trying to... Um, I don't know how much of I'm trying to please them. I'm just trying to, to, at the same... I'm trying to create a safe place. Yeah. And and at the same time, draw what I want to draw. Yeah, yeah. So that's important. Um, you know, too often we spend all of our time drawing what everybody else wants us to draw. Well, mm -hmm. when do you get to draw for you? Yeah, yeah. It's like one of my tutors says that something you create, there's bound to be someone out there that has the same idea about what you're doing. Oh, so true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so true, so true. 
You know, you see an idea and then you go watch a movie and you go, crap. <laughs> Where'd they get that idea? Those jerks. So. Um, so, so you, yeah. You mentioned about developing your style and things. Um, mm -hmm. I was thinking, where did your character style um, start? Well, my influences are, um, I love European comics. And I love uh, Bill Watterson style, Coward and Hobbs. And I grew up on ElfQuest and Wendy Penny and Richard Penny. Uh, I love Bone. I love um, a lot of the old, old newspaper comics like The, the Shadow. And, um, you know, I mean, I wasn't around for a lot of them in the 40s. Uh, but... I love the way they drew. You know, one of my favorites is uh, Little Nemo in Slumberland. Yeah. Uh, well, just what a captivating design. And sitting there looking at it, um, I, I, I realized I didn't want to be a mainstream comic book artist. Mm. I, I've got nothing against them. They are super talented. Some of my, my good friends... Um, you know, do that for a living. I love what they do, but that's not me. Uh, I I have a very cartoon, fun style. Uh, I can do serious fantasy. I like that as well. But I wanted to to just draw the way I wanted to draw and and make it work and and such. And so over time, you know, when I was twenty six, I had a really raw, raw, raw style that. I don't think was super marketable and I didn't even become happy with my artwork until I was in my 30s mm. and then all of a sudden it started to really develop and what helped develop was the ability to um, actually listen to to critiques mm. and I think the hard part that artists have is the minute someone says something about your work regardless of it, it you know the piece they think Oh, you're attacking me. Yeah. You're attacking my design. That's me. You're attacking me. In reality, they have no idea who you are. They're just giving you what they see um, that works for them or doesn't work for them. And when you can learn to listen and, and not always follow everything that they say, but listen to maybe their, their constructive criticism, if they're giving you ways to fix it, mm -hmm. then you start to grow. Yeah. When you can't listen, you don't grow. Mm. You'll always be stagnant. Yeah, that, that's the hardest bump. I remember back in, because I did course, um, and that kind of did all that for me because uh, we always had group critiques and sessions every uh, week or so. And that was a challenge at first because it's like, oh, I can't create anything good. It started off that, and then I was like, oh you know, change this, change that, it's actually pretty good, and then get it critiqued again, then, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it is, so, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm right there. And if, if you can't listen, mm. you know, that's, that's tough. Um, so, have you tried many mediums before? Um, I started with watercolors, and markers. Um, I love Copics. Um, I can't stand oils. Uh, and that's just personal. It's too, they take too long for me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like being quick. Um, I got nothing wrong with oils. I think they do some of the most beautiful paintings. And I look at those guys and do that. And uh, those that can do that, I just sit there and go, wow. You know, they very, very talented. Um, so you have that there, but I do a lot of uh, digital work now. I work on a Cintiq, okay. and so most of my work is done. My drawing tablet is now a screen, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm not working on my traditional table anymore. Yeah. I'm still using the same techniques. I just have a history button and an erase button that I can go back if I make a mistake and clean it up. Yeah. Plus, I like the fact that um, I'm about 60, not 60, 30 percent faster yeah. uh, uh, because of di the digital mediums. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And I can get in and, and, you know, I'm working on a piece right now, which I'll post later today, 
um, I can get in and actually really just work on detail areas mm-hmm. where I couldn't before because your eye can only you know you can only look so close. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it can be a, a time saver digital, um, mm-hmm. but then you know we've got masters of oil paint and watercolor that can produce the work just as fast as the digital. Um, oh yeah, mm. uh, and and my thing is is an artist needs to do what they're comfortable with. Yeah, definitely. You know, if if your strength is in oils and you're comfortable there, do it. Just go for it. Go to town. Um, if your strength is somewhere else, then you need to, to focus on that. There, I, I think that's the beauty about art is there's really no one solid way to do something. Art's about experimentation and creating and trying something new. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's just finding it. Like when uh, the, the Copics came out as a marker, you know, those things blew out everything else. And it's like I'm watercoloring but with a marker. And I love it. You know, and, and you can do so much with it. Yeah, those, so those things look amazing. I see people using them like, oh my gosh. And it's not for me. <laughs> I'm I like my huh. detail like color pencil is mostly I work in. And um, uh-huh. still painting like I am doing now. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're getting to the end there. Um, well, we're getting close to the end actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I I've kind of like. Oh, hey, we've got another question here actually. Um, yeah. Yeah. Have you researched into um, comics and? that kind of thing. Like what kind of research? Oh, uh, just any, before you kind of started, did you do any like research into, um, well, yeah. I looked to see what was out there that I liked Mm. and what did I want to make, you know. And uh, Dave Peterson, who does Mouse Guard, now, when you look at Mouse Guard, I don't know if you're familiar with Mouse Guard or not. Uh, Fantastic. And yeah. he draws his comic in squares. Mm. You know, very simple. It, it, it's, it's not a traditional page. And when I first saw that, I was my first reaction was that was a genius move. Um, because it proved that comics didn't have to be like the way we see them. You know, in in the states, um, when people read a comic book, they look at it as being uh, uh, six by um, ten size. Mm. You know, and and it has to. Be, you have your purist. It, it's got to be that. Uh, well, no, no, I'm I'm not into to purity here on this. I'm into. How do you want to tell a story, and is it possible to tell it in a way that might not be traditionally sound like everybody else does and still convey a good thing? And when I saw what Dave was doing, my first thought was, I want that. Mm. I want to create like that. And then I found Bone by Jeff Smith, and boom, I was in heaven. Because here were two creators telling the stories that they wanted to tell the way they wanted to tell them. And and once I saw that, I really stopped looking because I found the the style and the and the feel that I liked. Now I look for other reasons. Um, I want to see how someone lays something out. I want to see why they do the camera angles that they do. I think there's so much to learn out there. There's so much good talent, and it's just figuring out how to uh, how to utilize that talent. You know, to, to not so, and I'm not talking. You're not stealing either. You're just looking at going. Wow, he tried something new. I want to give that a shot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. There's... So I do some, but not a lot. Yeah. So you, you do a little bit of study work as well. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, but not as much as you. You know, now when I'm doing study work, I'm studying the piece that I've got to work on. 
Yeah. So, yeah. like, right now I'm working on a piece that involves a bunch of giants and certain kinds of giants. So I had to go find references to make sure that my giants would match what the client wants. Yeah. Uh, especially when you're dealing with folklore and, and other stuff, you want it to be accurate to to the environment or to the area that they're in. The the years ago when you were, I was drawing a children's book, it was brought to my attention. Now I didn't draw this, but but it was remarked that one of the problems is is they you don't do enough research of the location, mm. and it, they were drawing penguins uh, and polar bears together, and the the fauna that was around was not tundra based. Yeah. So here you had two species that didn't even belong yeah. in the same hemisphere. And at the same time, you're adding, you know, if I, you're from New Zealand, right? Yep. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> and you draw, you know, you've got all this, this stuff. Well, if someone asked me to draw something from New Zealand mm. and I draw a cactus, but the cactus is something that I would see in California. Now, if you haven't been from New Zealand, you'll never know. But if you got my comic and you saw that cactus, you would know right away. You yeah. know, this guy did not do his research. And that's kind of the same way. you got to research what you're, what you're actually studying or what you're supposed to be drawing to make sure it's correct. Yeah. Yeah, that's an important part. As you can see on here, I've got um, my reference stuff here. I could have gone further with some of the research stuff like I did look at cakes and um but I didn't really do the cupboard. I kind of <laughs> kind of did that without much research. I did look a little bit but I kind of had that in my head what I wanted. Mhm. Mm um yeah, do do you get research from that from past experiences and things you can remember? Yeah, I get researches from from past experiences, but at the same time, I get research from. Um, I'll go to YouTube and I'll look for stuff, and I'll go to. I have books. I have a huge library that I, I research. Like I bought a book that was nothing but illustrated trees. Mm. So I oh. trees are correct, um, and it allows me to add different kinds of, of, of feelings there. And then there's just other different things that I like to add and take away. But uh, I definitely like that rainbow cake. You sure work on a lot of layers, too. Oh, uh, yeah. It was because um, I was finishing the piece, and then I, I was like, oh, I've got to fix this up. So I put it on a new layer, and then it just gets messy from there. Um, usually when I'm at the end of my piece, it can get a bit messy like that. I'm not too worried about it being able to be edited as much because it's just like uh -huh. last little touches and critiques and things um yeah so I'm a bit like oh did I have to do, do so many layers then um <laughs> but yeah other but usually when I'm working through it I only have like up to five layers um yeah no I get it it looks nice I like it oh thanks yeah yeah I I just thought it'd be interesting to paint. Be interesting to paint. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. See, that's where I go. I, I find stuff that's interesting for me to paint. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I just I'm loving pugs at the moment, and I don't know. Um, I've got a pug series, so I want to dress pugs up in different suits and things. Uh huh. It just takes so it takes me a little while to produce them, so I'm like it's daunting me. I'm really wanting to get back into doing the characters, eh? <laughs> hmm. I understand. Totally understand. So go. um, basically, I'll probably just ask my last question because this is pretty much me finishing up. Um, so yeah, I just add the last touches. Um, I may take a break and that's, that's the finish of it there. Um, so basically what advice um, would you give to any aspiring artists? Um, draw every day would be the biggest. 
Two, um, don't be afraid of social media, mm. but to yeah. use more than just one social media. I yeah. think it's it's easy for artists to go, I only use Facebook, I only use Instagram, I only use Twitter. They're missing out on audiences mm. um, because they're alienating a whole audience. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is, I think the last thing is draw what you want. You know, not... You know, if you're in a class, yeah, you got to draw what the class wants. You know what you're being told. You have to follow the assignment. Or if you're working for a client, you got to follow what the client wants you to draw. But in, in in pure reality, you know, at the end of the day, draw for you. That's that's where the passion is. That's why people start to draw in the first place. They're looking for an escape and outlet. And if the outlet disappears, then they can't. You know, they're like, I don't want to draw anymore. Um, and and so we don't, you know. My goal is 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 how do I, how do I create, an outlet for for people or for myself? And that's the, uh, that's the most important thing is is making sure that that outlet is there. Um, ooh, that's wrong. Uh, drawing something and it came out incorrectly. Um, yeah. But you know, honestly, that's. That's the basic thing. And then it just comes down to the last aspect of it is what are you willing to give up to make the dream happen? You know, I, I know that, you know, young artists and old, you know, they've got their games. They, they have stuff they like to do. And, well, that's, that's fine and dandy, but you're missing the point of, of following the dream. The dream is to create, you know, do you, I, I like playing the game, but... Do you want to be the guy that just plays the game, or do you want to be the guy that creates the game? Do you want to be the guy that reads the story, or do you want to be the guy that tells the story? Mm. And that's kind of how you look have to look at it. Who are you? And once you figure that out and you're willing to put the time in, then things happen. But if you're not willing to put the time in, then you're still going to be following that dream and wondering why it's never happening because you're not willing to give stuff up or put the effort in to make it work. Yeah. Basically, don't be a follower, be a leader. <laughs> well, no, no, not, not so much be a leader. It's just put your money where your mouth is. Mm. Yeah. You know, I think... People want instant results. They want their first drawing to be absolutely perfect. They think that they should get the big job right off the bat. No, work for it. Put the effort in. Um, be willing to to get your hands dirty. Uh, you know, if we live in a society that's always based on I want it now, well, there's no actual reward to doing what we're doing. Yeah. And and the reward is watching at the end of the day you having a printed piece that you can go, I did that, and that looks fantastic, and I put the effort in, and it came out great, and I earned it. And I think that has more excitement and more power than anything else that, that we have in life. You know, I'd rather I would rather work and fail than have something handed to me personally. Mm, definitely. Cool. So, yeah, thank you for joining me today. Um, oh, thank you for having me. Yes, you're very welcome. And, yeah, that's Pokemon Part 2. Thanks for joining me. Good. Goodbye.